All right, so here we are with the complex numbers recap. Uh, so here what I'm trying to do is show you why complex numbers is important. So I'm solving a quadratic that doesn't actually have a solution. You can see it's got root uh, negative 16 in there. That's a problem. So no solutions, but we can use a uh, imaginary number to do that. So we're going to take that negative root negative 16 and split it up into root 16 and uh, negative 1. And that's going to allow us to use root negative 1, which we should now know is just the letter I. Um, and we're going to use that all the time when it comes to imaginary numbers. So that I just means root negative 1. Um, so I'm just going to finish solving this real quick. And just and there's a key point here. Just when we finish solving that, we'll see that there's a half or negative a half plus 2i or negative a half minus 2i. Now this, oh, let's wait until I circle it. So we've got a real component, that negative a half there is the real component, and we've got an imaginary component, and that positive 2i is the imaginary component. Just showing some new content in here, just showing you where complex numbers uh, lives in, in the general realm of the number system. Uh, so complex numbers covers all, all <coughs> numbers. Inside of complex numbers, we have R, the real numbers. We also have another circle for I, the imag purely imaginary numbers, but we're not showing that on this diagram. Inside of real numbers, we have rational numbers. That's the Q in here. Inside of that, we have the integers here. And inside of that, we have N just the natural numbers. So just to give you a sense of where complex numbers sits, they're actually an overarching thing. They're above real numbers in our number system. So that's what we can take away from this video. That's why it's important. All right, just simplifying a couple of um, negative thirds into there. So negative root or root negative 25 is the same as 25 times negative one in the root, which is five root negative one, which is five i. Um, root negative 7, same deal. Uh, it's going to be root 7 times negative 1, which is root 7 times root negative 1, which is root 7i. So that's sort of the key takeaway here. You've operated on um, thirds before, negative thirds, same deal. Um, now this bit here is talking about the real and imaginary components of complex numbers. So if z is equal to negative 3 plus 2i, we can find the real component of z, which is negative 3, or the imaginary component of z, which is 2. The imaginary component of z is not 2i, it's just 2. I might probably just do one more example, I think. Um, so the real component of 4 minus 5i is just 4. And then we'll probably just do the imaginary. This is a trick question. The imaginary component of 10 10 has no imaginary component. That's like 10 plus 0i. So the imaginary component is 0. Don't say no, it doesn't exist. It exists, it's just 0. All right, powers of i. This is a fun one. So i is equal to root negative 1. i to the 1 is just i. So i squared is root negative 1 times root negative 1. Using our third rules, we can multiply those and we'll get negative 1. Uh, i cubed is root negative 1 times root negative 1 times root negative 1. Root negative 1 times root negative 1 is negative 1 times negative 1 ends up being negative i. i to the 4, well, that's going to be negative 1 times negative 1 because it's i squared times i squared, which is just 1. And so we end up with this little pattern here. i to the 1 equals i, i to the 2 equals negative 1, i to the 3 equals negative i, i to the 4 equals 1. And after that, it's going to start repeating itself. So if we look at i to the 5 now, that's the same as i to the 4 times i, uh, which is just going to be uh, 1 times i. And the same thing happens for i to the 6, which is i to the 5 times i, and we can work around this. But this loop is going to start occurring. Start I, negative 1, negative I, 1, I.
Now, just apply this in a couple of questions here. So, z equals i to the 4 minus 2i squared plus 1. Now, i to the 4 is 1, uh, 2i squared is negative 1, and then you can just sort of work through it from there. Uh, i to the 6 minus 3i to the 4 plus 3i to the 2 minus 1. So, just again, working through it, i to the 4 times i to the 2 is 1 times negative 1. Um, i to the 4 is um, 1, so negative 3 times 1. I squared is negative 1, so 3 times negative 1, and negative 1. And you just put it all together after that. All right, this is just sort of combining two ideas, the imaginary component of a real number, and then simplifying using those powers as well, and then just finding what the imaginary component is. So when we go through all of this, we get um, negative 2i plus 2. I'm writing this backwards for some reason. I guess the i just appeared in the left, but the i should really come after the real number. All right, adding and subtracting complex numbers. This is going to feel a lot like adding and subtracting vectors. So there's no, you've, and you've had a lot of practice with that, so it shouldn't be too hard. All right, so uh, three, uh, we're going to do z plus w, so eight plus seven i plus. You can see I'm grouping the real terms and I'm grouping the imaginary terms. That's it. All right, adding two more, or subtracting two. Just make sure that you're putting that uh, bracket in there because you want to subtract the eight and subtract the negative seven or the positive seven i. Again, we're grouping real and imaginary components and adding or subtracting them from each other. All right, and then u minus w plus z. Just work through it step by step. You can see I've put this negative in brackets here so because I'm subtracting it. Um, so putting it in brackets means that I won't mess up with that sign. All right, so again, we're grouping our uh, real terms, we're grouping our imaginary terms, we're adding them all together. All right, just uh, multiplying complex numbers by a constant or a scalar. This is the same as a vector. Uh, so if we want uh, 3z plus w, we're going to multiply z by 3 there. Just using our distributive law, multiply the scalar by the real component, by the imaginary component. Um, and then we're just going to add our like terms there. All right, 2z minus w, same deal, multiplying by the scalar, multiplying by 2. And then grouping the real component, 6 minus 6 is 0, and 10i minus 10i is 0, so we end up with a 0. Uh, 4z minus 3w plus 2u. Now it's just long, but there's nothing new here. 4 times one imaginary number, a complex number, negative 3 times another complex number, positive 2 times another complex number. Use your distributive law throughout. Group your like terms, and we are. So that brings us to multiplying complex numbers by each other. Um, now, not a lot to do here. You've multiplied vectors by each other, same deal. Uh, 6 minus 2i, 3 plus 4i. Use your FOIL method. Uh, now, the real trick here, I suppose, is that when you multiply 2i by 4i, uh, you're going to get a real number because you're going to get that i squared there, uh, which is going to be negative 8 times negative 1, which is positive 8. Uh, so that's your sort of your trick. That's going to get added on to your real, real values there. So 26 plus 18i is our solution when we multiply those. Okay, same here, but this time we have a conjugate. We haven't talked about conjugates for this, but same as conjugates for thirds. What you get is that negative 6i plus 6i in the middle, which cancels each other out. Um, all right, so find the real z squared w plus z w squared for this thing here. So the only trick here, I guess, is that there's a, a square in here. So we're going to do 4 plus i squared, 3 minus i squared, 4 plus i plus 4, times 4 plus i. You've got to use your FOIL method here, so 16 plus 8i because it's i4 plus i4 and that i squared would be negative 1 and then we just use a foil method again for that 3 minus i to get a single solution um, all right so we're not done yet though because that's the z squared w now we want the real component of z squared w but i guess we'll get there in a minute uh, let's do z w squared so 4 plus i 3 minus i squared now, you can choose to do this however you want, but let's square that first. That makes sense because it's got a nice little pattern to it. Square, dirt, 
negative one. Use your FOIL method here. And we've got an answer. Now we need to find the real component of this plus the imaginary component of that. So the real component of that is um, 53. And the imaginary component of that is negative 16. I looks like I've lost a one here. So I've got the wrong answer, but oh, hey, right answer, done. All right, so quality of complex numbers. This is going to be the last one in the recap. So Z equals A plus BI, W equals C plus DI. If those two imaginary numbers are the same, then that is that if Z equals W, then A and C must be equal and B and D must be equal. So this gets pretty, pretty wild here pretty quickly. We're going to use some simultaneous equations um, to solve a question of equality. But this is about as hard as equalities get. All right, so we're saying that 3 plus 4i times x plus yi equals 29 plus 2i. So we've got a uh, complex number, 29 plus 2i here. If I do that FOIL method multiplication here, um, now I need to figure out what my real components and my imaginary components are. So 3x minus 4y, that's a real component there, 3x minus 4y. There's no i's in that. And then 3yi plus 4xi is an imaginary component. So now we say that 3x minus 4y equals 29. And we can factorize that. At least I hope we factorize that. That's going to make our life really hard if we don't. 3yi plus 4xi equals 22i. No, let's leave it how it is. Oh, there we go. Let's factorize it. All right, so we're saying that 3y plus 4x equals 22. So there's our two equations, the real equation with x and y, the imaginary equation with x and y, and then we just solve them simultaneously using, I think I used the elimination method there, and we get a solution. Uh, so there's the equality of complex numbers. A has to equal C, and B has to equal D.